The several reasons why we're going to, to I'm, I'm here to talk about this. One of them is for the folks that haven't been at the table before, maybe you're subbing for somebody else or you're new. Uh, and this is going to give you that kind of the background of what we do. For other folks, it's an update of what we're, we've been doing in the last year. And then for other folks, that, or for everyone here, there's a decision, as you see on your agenda, at the end of the discussion here about whether to renew the contract, the cooperative agreement uh, between IGBC and the um, WMI, Wildlife Management Institute. Just to go over that real quickly, and then I'll get into a few of the details, we are at the end of a five-year term, which ends this next summer, 2016, of this cooperative agreement. The basic funding is that annually was in 2011 and 2012, we got $40,000, and then in 2013, there was $11,400 added for the uh, Bear uh, Resistant Container Outreach Program, Basically, uh, Patty Soka and uh, some other support, Scott Jackson will be talking about it after I'm done. So that's what is in the co cooperative agreement annually. So we get uh, to also add a little bit to that, but just this is not necessarily something that we do um, before the grants are administered. Greg just talked about the $36,000 pot for grants, so any non-federal grants we administer. Also, in addition to that, when we get things like, um, I'll, I'll talk about this, this is the Bear Spray brochure. When we have a product or an event or something going on, we'll raise money, uh, a video, we'll raise money. And so over the past uh, term of this, con of this particular agreement, we've raised about $25,500 through WMI. In addition to that, there's some in-kind that uh, WMI does, about 50% of Christmas time. And then we charge 10% overhead for this cooperative agreement when our federally approved overhead, uh, WMI's federally approved overhead is 29 to 44%. So there's a little bit of in-kind savings there too. So why spend so much time? Uh, in the recovery plan it says, gaining the support and confidence of people who live in or near grizzly habitat is one of the greatest challenges for grizzly, to grizzly bear recovery. The efforts include intensive education programs, nuisance bear control programs, proactive livestock and garbage management to reduce bear attractants on private land, maintenance of personal contact, and that's a big part of what goes on um, in the IGBC recovery areas. Maintenance of personal contact between citizens and biologists, and these efforts are critical to the recovery of grizzly bears of all ecosystems. This carries through in a lot of other five-year plans and documents and then within uh, the different ecosystems. So the first thing that WMI did is they developed a comprehensive strategy for INE. There were workshops in each and every one of the five ecosystems, and they developed themselves what they want to do with information and education, and that provides the direction, it provides the criteria for grant selection, uh, in fact. So we're in the fourth year of implementation of that. Um, and then in 2013 and 2014, uh, we did an evaluation with three components, the online survey, subcommittee discussions, and in-depth interviews. Both a comprehensive strategy and this evaluation are posted on the website. So just in one slide, I'm not going to uh, make your eyes bleed from graphs. Uh, that's not my thing. So what, I, what I've got here, though, is uh, the uh, results of this online survey. We asked a lot of the field staff that works in these different recovery areas, so what's the most effective IME? And what we found is that, well, it's no surprise, except for a few basic brochures, and we've only got three basic brochures that we've done in the last uh, four and a half years, uh, three, the, the, the brochures aren't as helpful as, say, the bear trailer or patrols or things like that where you have face-to-face. -face. And then in addition to that, because of social media, videos, very short videos are becoming, or any kind of videos are becoming much more valuable. So having said that, so we're going to move into what are the components. We manage, I do manage the content on the website. I'll talk a little bit more about how that's changing. Bear resistant container outreach. Uh, I'm going to let Scott talk talk about that, but I will just kind of lay it out for you. Printed video and media, 
grant program, we do some administration there. And then in addition to that, we have new projects. Talk about that. This is the way the website currently looks. Uh, we are, it, and uh, the Google Analytics for this says that what people mostly search for here are beer resistant containers, that's really important to folks. Uh, population recovery, what's, the, uh, what's going on with population recovery, and bear sprays. Bear resistant container outreach, there's a lot of information there. If you don't know, IGBC maintains a list of certified uh, uh, bear resistant containers. And in, do, and, and in so doing, that's a huge project. It starts with there's a problem, which somebody, there's some great vendors out there who try to fix that. It goes through testing down at the Wolf and Grizzly Recovery Center, and then it's added to our certified list. Those of you who have agencies that have food storage orders or are going to make food storage orders, this is generally the list that you refer to in your, in your uh, food storage orders. As I mentioned before, there's uh, uh, some printed, some printed uh, media that we have put together. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so. I have a bunch of these. These are the bear spray ones that we wrote and have the most recent information on bear spray. I'll put those on the back table back there if you don't have one and want to know more about it. So, and you can download this off, off of uh, the website. Both the, the printable one, you can take the printer, and then one you can do in your office. This is, I'm going to bring some of these later on today. This is the most uh, recent one. We did that this summer. We have a new coloring book, and I'll bring those around. You can also download that off the website, in addition to uh, getting that a, a, print, a printable template that you can take to the printer and do a nicer, nicer than what your office copier can do. One of the things that uh, we've raised uh, a fair amount of money for, and has been incredibly uh, successful, is we've got a 30 second and a one minute spare spray video featuring Craig Boddington. The 30 second one is a demonstration and the one minute one is training. And that's been posted and reposted, I'd probably guess, a hundred, hundreds of thousands of times. It's kind of after you get up into those kind of numbers, you lose track of them. In addition, there was a grant proposal put in a few years ago by Wyoming Game and Fish Department to film a captive grizzly bear getting into campsites, not getting into because they were bear resistant containers. And they also uh, uh, had that captive bear uh, get into bird feeders and barbecues and livestock. And this particular one shows uh, this, you can see the bear down there. And this particular one, uh, a guy walks up with bear spray, uh, not an angler walks up with bear spray on his hip. And he does what we would suggest, what most people would suggest. If the bear doesn't see you back away, but he has his bear spray and he has it out while he backs away. So there's an a, a illustration of some uh, good behaviors on that one. What we're working on, there's two things about this. One is all of your agencies have access to any of this footage that they want to use with media. So if somebody comes to you, you and somebody from the media comes to you and says, Oh, I've got to get something on the 5 o'clock news tonight, and I need this. You have access to that. Then the second part of this is, is uh, there was a project to make uh, two to three minute videos, little stories. Uh, we're in the process of putting caption captions on that. But that has gone to the bottom while we're working on the website. It's coming. It's just not going to happen until the spring. Uh, current INE grants to ecosystems, what uh, WMI does is the non-federal grants. So the non-federal grants for this year, for 2016, went to uh, Yak Valley, Forest Council, Defenders of Wildlife, uh, Western Wildlife Outreach, and then uh, Fish, Wildlife and Parks, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, and Confederated Salish Kuti Tribes. So those are just the ones that we administer. Our projects for this year. We're going to, what? I think uh, Wyoming Game and Fish offered to uh, host the IDBC website. We were going to try to improve it, uh, but they found that with budget cuts that and uh, safe, uh, security issues, that wasn't going to work out. So what we've recently done is shifted gears, and we have a local website designer. I'm going to work with them and do the content, and we'll have that done hopefully by April 1st. We want to create a food storage interactive map We've already got the food storage, uh, Patty Soka worked on this, got all the food storage orders um, posted on our website. 
for each of the states. So when, uh, as I revise the website, I'll make an interactive map. And then uh, we're working on posting, as I just mentioned, the videos online for social media for, for on YouTube so that you, if you have a website for your particular organization, you can upload them. And then the last one I'm going to get into a little more detail on, just as a, uh, maybe a, well, I'll, I'll tell you why. <laughs> Southwest Montana, the area of Southwest Montana has a working group of, in, of interagency uh, uh, organizations and uh, agencies much like many of you in your different ecosystems. What they do is not atypical for the rest of you. What they do for Southwest Montana is they have a bear trailer that gets scheduled at different events. They have uh, uh, forest service outreach to campers and campground hosts. Fish, uh, Fish Wildlife and Parks also does outreach and education. Uh, the forest service does patrol, does patrol for food storage order compliance. They offer bear spray training and information about bear spray recycling. But what they found, and this may sound familiar to the rest of you, is that there was inconsist there's inconsistent funding from the different agencies because agencies are all about inconsistent funding, right? So uh, there is also a lot of employee turnover. There are issues with seasonal hire limitations. I know these the federal agencies have uh, veterans rules, and so they would they might have folks that are not that dedicated to bear safety education or, or human bear conflict uh, prevention that they need to hire or have to hire. Uh, there's over time and travel issues because there are it's, it's an inefficient system. And there's also a lot of potential for inconsistent men messaging. The volunteer campground host may be telling bear stories, right? Where you've got this really uh, focused message. So what the goal of this particular project is, they're going to try to hire um, an interagency coordinator for all of, uh, all of Southwest Montana to gain a more informed public, reduce conflicts, and increase social tolerance of bears, which is all part of the recovery plan. The idea is to increase consistency and efficiency, retain skilled help, which if you hire seasonals is always a problem, um, and enhance the outreach with targeted messages. And the way that they're going to go about that is their, the, the project that they're, the proposal that is out there is that there will be a two year pilot Southwest Montana coordinator. So over two years, that would cost about $150,000. Um, and the full time position would be, would be um, supervised by WMI. The reasoning behind this is it's a lot easier to raise funds through a nonprofit, which WMI is. Uh, versus getting money for an agency to uh, staff, for agency staff. The support by, it'll all be supported by Southwest Montana uh, Working Group, which is very active. And the idea is, to, uh, oh, the idea is to start out by getting everybody together in that working group and making sure that we're all walking down the same road. Objectives, target audiences, what's the core message? How do you make somebody behave differently? Let's try to get that as efficient as we possibly can. So that's the new project, one of the new projects that we're working on. So I'm going to um, turn it over here in a minute, but your decision point between now and next summer's IGBC Executive Committee meeting is to whether or not to continue the WMI cooperative agreement uh, for however long the partnership. And the way to go about that is to amend the cooperative agreement uh, and to extend the partnership or to incor and to incorporate that at the budget, which I believe, and I'm going to uh, let Tammy handle this, um, I believe that that's, that's what you'll be doing next summer after ex executive committee meeting. So I'm hoping that that gave you the kind of background that you need in order to, to make the decision that you need to make. Yes. 